Hello and welcome back to Prep Bites. So, uh, in this session, we are going to be adding a bit more flair into our UI uh, by adding some animations. Now, we could go in and do this by using our sudo class like hover or active uh, as in such so as to uh, go and give some custom styling because right now there isn't much even though I have a bunch of elements over here so this is my available groups component even though I have a bunch of elements there is no interaction even if I go in and click on them there is no interaction at all so in order to give that feeling that okay yeah so this element is interactable you can click on it we are gonna add a bit of animations onto this and uh, the way we'll be doing it is by using this particular uh, library this addition library called as frame of motion it's a comp it's a really uh, production ready motion library which allows you to go in and add these custom animations to your react components without writing too much CSS code. It makes the process way easier and you kind of get really good animations out of this out of the box. So if you can even go in and give some really simple animations. You can give complex animations courtesy of this as well. This is a really cool library to go in and explore. And um, this the, the reason why we're going and utilizing this is so that we can get you people started in going in and using or getting comfortable with this particular library. and the overall use case though the way to go in and implement or use this particular library is really simple it's fairly simple to utilize so the very first thing you have to go in and do is to install the library into your react application so for that you can go into the introduction page and there at the very bottom it'll tell you what is the command that you need to run so as to install this particular library okay so i'm going to jump back into my vs code and let's get this library installed so as, as I go in and do this, uh, my motive or my objective over here is to provide some style, some custom animations onto this available groups component of mine. Which as you can see, there are going to be a bunch of clickable elements available over here. So what I want to do is I want to give some kind of hover effects and clickable effects so that it, me, it feels like the person whomsoever is going to use this will know that this element is interactable. Okay, so we just don't want this to be a list, we want it to be interactable as well. So if the person clicks on it, we are going to go in and get them added to that particular group. Okay, so in order to do this, uh, we've already went in and installed our uh, library, which is Frame of Motion. The second step is to go in and import this, per this Frame of Motion into our uh, React component. So this is going to be a component that we'll be utilizing. It makes the process of giving animations to these custom really good animations way more easier. So let me go in and show you how exactly you can go in and accomplish this. So I'm going to copy this line over here and directly jump back into my, uh, my groups component. Okay, so I have my groups component over here and I'm not going to be needing any CSS for the time being. We will we'll be able to go and add all of these animations without even having the need to go in and uh, you know uh, use any CSS altogether. So uh, what we have to do now is to go in and import this component which is called motion and we are all set. Now this particular component, this motion component, right? It goes in and provides you with a bunch of uh, pre-built animations and like properties that you can utilize so as you give whichever animation of your choice. So what I'm going to be doing in here is that I want all of these list items. So I, I, it's just, I just copy pasted these uh, elements over here. So I have these list item elements which are present inside of a div. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and instead of wrapping it inside of a normal div, I'll be wrapping it inside of the div element, which is provided by our motion component. So by going in and doing this, I'll be able to go in and get access to a bunch of additional properties that can be added onto this component. So by just going in and making this particular change would not go in and bring in much of a difference because we have not specified what exactly is the animation that it has to go in and perform. So uh, even if I take you back into the browser, uh, one of the things you'll be able to notice that I've removed out the other bunch of elements. But as you can see that, yeah, there is no difference whatsoever. 
you'll be able to see the difference the moment I go in and add these bunch of properties. So it gives you a bunch of properties. So for example, let's say I want uh, it to go in and scale up when I go in and I hover on top of it. So for going in and achieving this, we have a certain property which is called as while hover. So it's a property or variant label to animate while the hover gesture is recognized. Okay, so uh, this is what you're going to do. We're going to go in and just specify some CSS inside of here. Okay, so what I want to do is I just want to go in and change the scale of my element. Let's not go in and change it by much. Uh, I'll say let's let's try out 1.2 uh, 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 by a factor of 1.2. So what's going to happen is if I go in and I hover on top of that particular element, then it will go in and increase its scale by uh, a factor of 1.2. So it's going to increase its size. So let's see if this goes in and works out. I'm going to jump back into my browser. And as you can see, the moment I go in and I hover on top of it, the element scales uh, to a factor of 1.2. But uh, this kind of is a bit on the bigger side, but I think we we'll, we should be able to reduce it. Let's just reduce it down to the bare minimum. I'll say even 1.1 would be a bit too much. So we'll go for a really subtle uh, scale. So let's go for 1.01. Maybe if it's needed, we'll go in and increase it later on. So I'm going to go into my browser. Let's see how this looks. Oh, this is this is fairly good. So as you can see, when I go in and I hover on top of this element, there's a subtle scale up that is seen with this. So this kind of gives in an idea that this element, this component, okay, this HTML element is interactable. Okay. So I also want to, let's say, for example, I want some animation when I go in and click on this component, right? Doing this is also fairly simple, similar to while hover. We have another one, which is while tap. So this again allows you to go in and give some animation while the component is being clicked. Okay, so that's a gesture, which is the tab gesture, which is being clicked. So I can go in and say in this scenario, <clears throat> I will go in and change the scale to let's say 0 0.98. Okay, so it's going to reduce. It's going to reduce just by a really small amount, but it will be noticeable altogether. So if I take you back into the browser, let's see what difference does this make. So you can see when I click on an element, there is this bouncing effect that I get. So you won't be able to get this kind of transition by just bare CSS styles alone. You'll have to go in and dish out lots of lines of CSS to be able to go in and get this amount of springy animation. Okay, there are way more amount of customizations that you can do, but I'll say this is fairly good. Okay, so I'm going to go in and just make a bunch of copies of this so that, you know, we are able to see the whole list in motion. Okay. So I'm going to go and there we go. Let's just come back into the browser. And as you can see, I have a bunch of elements over here. And as I hover through them, you can see that they are interacting on the gestures that I'm providing. If I'm hovering on top of them, they increase a little bit on slice on their size. If I click on them, you can see I get the springy animation where it goes in and decreases in scale and then comes back up. Now, even though there is no backend functionality that we've given it, but this will make these elements to feel a bit more interactive uh, when the person is going in and using them. So this is one of the cases where you'll be able to go in and animate individual HTML elements. But what if I want to go in and animate, how exactly are these elements going to go in and enter or exit from my React component? So for doing this, we are going to be utilizing an additional component, which is called as animate presence. This is an additional component, which is given to us and it helps as the name suggests, it allows you to go in and animate components when they're removed from the react tree. So implementing this is also fairly simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both of these components of mine, which is the, uh, uh you know, the available groups and the online users component. And let's just give a really subtle transition animation to both of them. Okay. So I'm going to jump back into my VS code and let's get both of them opened up. Okay. So I'm going to go in and start this process on with my uh, group component. And the very first thing I'll do is to get access to my animate presence. Let's just go in and get it here. So it's animate. Presence. So this is the component we're going to need. As you can see, I'm importing it again from the frame of motion library. And what we'll have to do is to take the entire container 
for the uh, for whatever we have created, which is for displaying the available set of groups. I'm gonna take the whole thing, all right, and just put it or nest it inside of this animate presence element. Okay, so in, I have an animate presence component here. So I'm gonna go in and nest it, or you know, uh, basically just go in and throw all of them inside of the animate presence component. All right. So once this is done, uh, we still have a few more things to do, which is especially that we want to animate this particular container, which is called or with this particular div called as list container. So even if I go in and take you back into my browser, you'll be able to notice that the element, the HTML element that we're trying to animate is an HTML element called as list container It's the same element, right? Okay. So what we'll do here is uh, we are going to convert this normal div element into a div element that we are getting from the motion component. So I'm going to say motion dot div and that's it. Now you'll be able to go in and add in a bunch of styles onto the animation that we'll be giving this. Okay. Now the way to go in and do this, the way to go in and provide these transitions is to specify the initial and exit animation as well as the normal animation that it's going to go in and read. So what is the current normal state that it will go in and have? We will be also able to go in and specify how exactly the transition is to happen and also fine tune it, the amount of duration it's going to take and uh, the overall timing function that it's going to occupy. So uh, these are the pro properties we are going to go in for. The first one is going to be the initial state. So initially, what exactly are is going to be the state from where it's going to start the animation. So whenever you are doing CSS animation, you always have a starting point and you have an ending point. So this animation is basically nothing but changing CSS from your initial point and uh, changing it all the way back to whatever CSS you're given to the ending point. So this change of CSS happens gradually over a specific duration, right? So this is going to be my initial style. So what I'll do is I want a small fade, uh, fade in, fade out kind of phenomena here. So what I'll do is I'll say that the initial opacity is going to be zero because I want to fade in and fade out. So I'm going to set the initial opacity to zero and scale. Let me go in and set it to zero as well. So I don't want it to be visible at all. And what I want to do is I want it to go in and animate. So the moment the animation starts, I want the opacity to go in and become normal. All right. So the opacity is going to go in and get normal. So I'll just say the normal opacity, the default value will be one and we'll set its scale down back to one as well. Okay. So I'm going to do both of this here and we'll also do also specify it for exit, uh, for exit. We're going to be like, okay, let's just go in and do the same fade out strategy. So opacity is going to go all the way back to zero. And our scale is also going to go all the way back to zero. All right. So once this happens, uh, we'll be able to see some word of an animation here. Now you can even go in and fine tune this by using this transition property where, which allows you to go in and specify a timing function by using this property called as ease. So the idea here is that similar to how CSS animations work here. Also, you're going to be able to go in and get access to a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, timing functions. Uh, one of the ones I prefer is a timing function called as anticipate, which gives that bouncy feeling when you go in and, uh, do the transition. Uh, another transition, another property that is really important over here is gonna be the duration property because we'll have to specify for how long this animation needs to go in and last. Now, uh, having a really long duration for the animation will make it seem that our application isn't snappy enough and is really slow altogether. So you want to keep the animations to be really on a short time frame. So you want it to happen really quickly, right? So uh, maybe I'll go in and specify this as uh, zero point. Uh, let's just say zero point three. Uh, you know, zero point three seconds. Okay, so I'm going to specify the value over here as zero point three. And uh, let's see what difference does this make. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to get this subtle transition across these components of us. Okay. So I'm going to jump back into my browser. Okay. And as you can see, I have the animations that are given it already. And now if I jump back into available groups, you can see we have this subtle animation. All right. So it's just 
fade in, fade out kind of animation. And we've only added in for these two components. So the other components are going to go in and show up immediately. But for these set of two components, you can see we have a really subtle animation, even though it's not too much it kind of goes in and gives it that added flair to it. You can play around with these animations. You can give some even more modular and simple animations so that you can uh, go in and work around with these transitions. Okay, so this is kind of the whole part of using uh, frame of motion. Even though we have only touched the tip of the iceberg here with that of frame of motion, Starting or getting started with frame of motion is a really simple thing to do because ultimately all you're going to do is to utilize this motion component and give it some additional bunch of properties so that you can get whichever animation you want. So there is a bunch of things that you can go in and explore uh, from the documentation for frame of motion. And I would highly suggest that you go in and do so because this is one of the libraries which can make the process of giving animations way easier as compared to going in and using bare bones CSS. Okay, so I, I'll uh, I'll leave this with you people altogether. Uh, I'll suggest that you go in and you try things out, try to play around with these properties that are accessible over here. Go with the documentation, get thorough with it, and try to go in and give some really cool animations to your application so that it feels really interactive. So that will be all for this particular video. Starting in from the next session, we are going to be starting with our backend. We'll be going and creating our server, our database, we'll be integrating it. And I'll be also briefing you on how exactly do we intend to do this. So that will be all for this particular video. See you in the next one.